Good morning. Welcome to my class. Today, we are going to have the part two of reducing dropout rates in the country, Philippines. The following presentation talks about the conceptual framework of the DORP program. DORP operational framework, strategic components, critical factors contribute to the successful implementation of the DORP, who are the beneficiaries of the DORP program, rules of person who directly managing the DORP students, and the school DORP in action. All right, this is how the DORP conceptual framework looks like. The framework represents how the DORP supports the regular class program to attain the goal of the SIP and the DEDP in producing a functionally literate learner or graduate. It also shows the relationship of the DORP to the alternative learning system or ALS. Now let us talk the relationship between the DORP and the regular class program. The regular class program provides the major contribution to produce the desired learner, which is the goal of the SIP and the DEDP. The DORP enhances the delivery of the regular program as it prevents potential school learners leaves the school. Furthermore, DORP seeks to retrieve those who are out of school youth and those who want to join the regular classes. DORP supports the regular class program through the strategic components. What are these? The strategic components of, uh, refers to OHSP, is SII, and OI. Okay, these are mnemonic devices, and on the lower, um, lower left side of the screen, these are the names representing the mnemonic device. Like for example, ADM is alternative delivery mode, ALS, alternative learning system, DEDP, division education development plan, DORP, dropout reduction program, is effective alternative secondary education, OHSP, open high school program, OI, Other Interventions, SII, School Initiati Initiated Interventions, and SIP, School Improvement Plans. Okay, the OHSP and ES, these are components of DORP that are considered ADM because the students do not attend the regular class program while enrolled in these two programs. Uh, the learners who are enrolled in OHSP as an intervention has a direct indirect link with the regular class programs since it is a distance learning. However, the learner has the option to join the regular class anytime during the period of the study. Likewise, the ease students, on the other hand, are temporary leavers of the regular class program, and they re-enter the class after satisfactory completed the modules that was given to them. Then the SII and OI, these are interventions given for the SARDO or um, students at rest of dropping out. So the students are members of the regular class program, but 
participated in these two interventions to prevent them from dropping out. Okay, let us go to um, the relationship of the DORP program and OWS. As mentioned earlier, um, as mentioned in the part one of um, our slides, primary objective of the DORP is to prevent students from dropping out. At the same time, it motivates those who are out of school to return and finish basic education. So in cases where a sardo cannot be saved, he has the option to participate in ALS so that he can attain functional literacy. Okay, this is how the DORP operational framework looks like. So the DORP framework presents how the program functions at the school level and how the division, regional, and central offices of the Department of Education support the program in accordance with the Republic Act 9155, Governance of Basic Education Act of 2001. What are the strategic components of the DORP? So we have number one, OHSP, Open High School Program. This is an alternative mode of secondary education that addresses learning problems of students who cannot join the regular class program due to justifiable reasons. So it uses, uh, this program uses distance learning and makes use of multimedia materials. It requires the learners to undergo the Independent Learning Readiness Test, or ILRT, and Informal Reading Inventory, IRI, or IRI. Then maximum of six years to complete secondary education. Number two, Effective Alternative Secondary Education, or EASE. This is an alternative mode of learning for short-term absentees or temporary leavers of the regular class program due to justifiable reasons. Part-time job, illness in the family, seasonal work, calamitous events, peace and order problem, and the like. This learning mode uses module which is or which the students study while on leave of absence. And to qualify, a student should pass the reading and writing ability test in Filipino, English, and math. Number three. School Initiated Interventions, or SII. These are innovative and homegrown interventions developed by schools to prevent the SARDO from dropping out and to increase their achievement rate. Number four strategic components of the school DORP is other interventions, or OIs. These are interventions developed not by the school itself, but by other agencies, which has also resulted in increasing the holding power of the school. For example, the Provincial LGU of Leyte initiated ECOT-P, or Income, creating opportunities through technology projects, which generated income for the third and fourth year high school students at risk of dropping out due to lack of financial support. What critical factors contribute to the successful implementation of the DOOR program? So we have number one, committed leadership. This refers to the leadership of the school head, the school DOOR council, 
the teachers and the division dorp council involved in managing the program okay number two train dorp council and implementers the competence to manage is a prerequisite for the dorp program number three availability of materials materials print and non-print should be available as needed to ensure that learning objectives are totally achieved and last factors we have participation and support of stakeholders so the active and direct involvement of the students and their parents or guardians is a must in all the dorp activities likewise the support of the other stakeholders like the local government ptca community officials non-government organizations and others is necessary in as much as several risk factors are community related who are the beneficiaries of the door program okay number one students at risk of dropping out number two out of school youths of school age who decide to complete basic education through the alternative delivery mode okay here is the management of the school door program rules of person who directly managing the dorp students participate in selecting the appropriate dorp intervention with the guidance of the class advisor next enter into a dorp agreement next prepare implement and assess self-directed learning plans next fulfill the requirements of the selected intervention and lastly report to the class advisor and subject teachers according to the agreement what is the role of class advisors or teachers first identify sardo by subject area and year level next prepare sardo monitoring list next diagnose student strengths weaknesses interests and learning difficulties design appropriate intervention with colleagues and the sardo implement the interventions track or evaluate progress of sardo another rule of the class advisors and teachers is to assist the school head in formulating their plan conduct advocacy to the following stakeholders parents students community and lgus submit irregular progress report on sardo to the school head attend training or workshop on dorp assist in the conduct of in-service training for dorp implementers update information about sardo okay what is the rule of the school head in implementing the dorp program in school the school head leads in designing dorp management structure in making it functional leads in managing the school dorp plan leads the planning and conduct of dorp advocacy participate in dorp trainings conduct school level training or enhancement leads in benchmarking best door practices in his school and submits door reports to the division door coordination the role of guidance counselor updates continuously the guidance program on door 
prepares DORP guidance tools and forms, conducts counseling sessions, and maintains a centralized DORP records. Okay, another rule of guidance counselor to assist the class advisors or teachers in profiling of students, preparing and updating SARDO monitoring list, conducting home visits, conducting individualized interview, facilitating homeroom and PTE meetings, updating of individual records of students, diagnosing and solving problems of students. What is the role of parents or guardians in the success of their program? Okay, number one, signs the agreement as one of the principal parties if necessary helps the SARDO implement the agreement, assess the teachers in managing and evaluating the DORP intervention, participates in DORP-related activities, work as partners of the class advisor or teachers in monitoring the SARDO. Okay, what is the role of school DORP coordinator? So, the coordinator gathers and synthesizes data for the school door plan, assists the school head and the door team in preparing the school door plan, synchronizes the door activities, monitors the implementation of the plan, and provides feedbacks to implementers, synthesizes progress reports of class advisors, prepares and submits school DORP reports to the school head of the DORP Council. Now, what is the rule of the school DORP Council? It sets policies and standards on school DORP management. It resolves sensitive DORP-related issues and concerns. It advises the school head on DORP-related matters. And lastly, it provides oversight information to decision makers in the school. Now let's have the school DORP in action. So the DORP program has three major phases. So we have phase one, it refers to the planning, planning the division and school DORP. Okay. Phase 2, implementing the door plans. And phase 3, evaluating the effect of the program. Let's talk about the phase 1. So it talks about planning. So under planning, we have conducting the situational analysis. Probably, we we ask ourselves what is the current dropout rate of the school what is the retention rate how about the completion rate the achievement rate are there serious gap between the desired and actual retention completion and achievement rates and what are the causes and effects of the gaps so these are questions under phase one, number one. Phase one, number two, designing the solutions to the problem. We have letter A, situation here. Under it, problem statement and background or context of the problem. Letter B, general and specific objectives. Letter C, intervention strategies. Letter D, implementation and M&A &E plans. Letter E, management plan. Letter F, sustainability 
land. That falls under number two or phase one. Phase one, number three, appraising the school door plan. The school door plan shall be presented to the stakeholders for validation and improvement. Okay, now let's have the phase two of the door program, which is implementing the school door plan. So number one, start up the door council and the school head review the plan once more to ensure that the strategies are practical and responsive to the existing situations and acceptable to the implementers. Number two, plan execution. The implementers should see to it that the address students are properly identified and provided the needed assistance. Number three, monitor and evaluate progress and implementation. The purpose of PME is to track the implementation of the DOOR program. Phase two, implementing the school DOOR plan. So there are two major activities of plan execution. Number one, profile the learners. Number two, gather and update supporting data. Under number two, we have absences and tardiness, declining academic achievement, frequent violation of school rules, non-participation in class activities, and lastly, non-submission of class requirements. Phase 2, Implementing the School Door Plan So there are major activities of plan execution. Number 1, Analyze the problem. Number 2, Conduct the problem-solving conference. Number 3, Identify and design the appropriate solution. Number 4, Implement the solution. Number five, assess the implementation and results of the intervention. And lastly, replan. Now let us move on to the phase three of the DORP program, which is evaluation. Under it, we have here the result monitoring. We might be throwing questions like, are the EAS, OHSP, SII, and other interventions able to keep Sardu in school? Is there improvement in their attendance, class participation, and learning outcomes? Is the school DORP council functioning as expected? Is the Sardu tracking system at the school and classroom levels Producing the expected outcomes. What is the school DORP action for unenrolled learners? Okay, there are three strategies to get unenrolled students to go back to formal or non-formal school. So let's have number one, enrollment advocacy campaign. We also have house-to-house -house enrollment campaign. And lastly, referral to alternative learning system. Why we need to evaluate the DOOR program? Okay. It's simply because it tells us if the DOOR is effective and efficient in reducing dropout rate and increasing retention rate, completion, and achievement rates. Who should be responsible for the evaluation of the DORP? Okay, so the school head, the students, the class or section advisors, 
the guidance counselors, the department head, and the door council are responsible for the evaluation of the door program. What are the steps suggested to evaluate DORP? Okay, let's have number one. State clearly the purpose of the evaluation. Next, state the specific objective and the evaluation questions. Number three, decide what data to gather to achieve the objectives and answer the questions. And number four, plan how to analyze and interpret the results. What processes are suggested to evaluate the DORP? Number one, select and prepare the data gathering tools. Orient or train the users of the tools. Gather and analyze data and interpret the results. Summarize the findings and discuss them with the interested users. Formulate the recommendations and assess if they are acceptable and implementable. Disseminate and utilize the findings to improve the DOOR program. At the end of the school year, when the school head presents his annual report to the stakeholders, the report on DORP should give answers to the four questions. Okay, number one, has the DORP reduced significantly the school dropout rate? Number two, have the save at risk students achieved at least the minimum competency standards? And number three, has the DORP brought back the unenrolled pupils and has referred to ALS? And number four, has the DORP contributed to the achievement of SIP objective on improved retention and achievement rates? Thank you so much everyone for following up until the end of the presentation.